So visually, the quadratic equation could be something like we just had, where it crosses at x equals 1, and then x equals negative 4, and then down here somewhere. And we had, let me just get a little bit thicker here. So we came down. Oh, I'm still on the line tool. Sorry about that. So we have this quadratic function that's curving like this. And then in that case right there, we had these roots and this point over here, the y-intercept. And a couple of things could happen when we manipulate the equation. So we should look at that relationship briefly. We have ax squared plus bx plus c. That is equal to our quadratic equation. So what would happen if I messed around with the a value over here? Well, when you mess around with the a value, um, the higher that value, the steeper our line becomes. So if, if a is going to be increased, for let's say, in our case here, a was 1, right? Well, what if a was 2? It would go up twice as fast. If a was 3, it would go 3 times as fast. And this is just my rough sketch. So in these two cases here, um, a is going to be bigger than 1. right? We start off in our equation with x squared um, plus 4x minus 5 is our quadratic equation. In that case, a was 1. And actually, let me rewrite that in red so we don't lose track of all these pictures. So when a was 1, we have our red line. And that was here. But when we increased a, we get these green lines in here. So if we decreased a, if a was less than 1, it would be, have a, a less steep climb to it, right? It could be something like that. So a is less than 1. And that's... Um, so the the a value changes the steepness of the function of the quadratic equation, and we can look at some of those, I guess, in other videos about why that makes sense. We'll go through some examples, but you can kind of play around with it yourself and see what's going on here, and you can try and graph these out. Um, as you increase the a value, it gets steeper, and as you decrease it. Uh, the quadratic function opens wider and wider. And if we look at what happens, the b, the b coefficient, I'm not going to go into this one too much, but the b actually will change um, the location of the quadratic. So we can get all kinds of funky stuff where, let's just set up our axes and look at this. We could have um, quadratic equations over, let me stuck on that line tool again, here we could have an equation over here, we could have one up here, over here, over here, and really, you know, these points are being moved around. They're being shifted. And if we want to move this quadratic function around, we can do that by changing the b value. And also the um, c value, what does the c value do? Well, let's look at that for a moment. If we set our axes up, so I think in our, if I remember back to our equation, we had um, a quadratic a function which crossed down here, and I think it crossed at negative 5. So something like this. Oops, I should fix that. That looks like the quadratic is going to close back in on itself. So let me fix this. Oh, sorry, one more time. That's a little bit better. Okay. So if we want to raise the c value, we also will raise our function. So we could maybe increase it by 5, and then we'd cross over here. right? It would actually raise the function itself. So maybe it looks something more like this. Draw it. There we go. Not terrible drawing. But also we could lower the c value, and we would lower our function. So maybe we go down here. So in this case, the c value increases either the height or it lowers it. So it could affect the height. But it's not as simple as that. If we go back to our very first a value, we're talking about um, increasing a past 1 or making it less than 1. And if it was bigger than 1, if you remember, a really rough sketch here, here we have a function. And then if we increase the value of a, it became 
a much steeper function. And if we decrease the value of a, it became a less steep function. Maybe it could be something like this, really wide. Well, what if a was, was negative? And I, I should have said that over here. a is less than 1. Well, a is less than 1, but greater than 0. What if a is less than 0? Well, when a becomes negative, we flip our quadratic in a way. Let me show you an example of that. So when a is negative, if our original quadratic was like this, well, if a is negative, then we flip it like that. So we can turn our quadratic around.